My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. And guess what? You got the wrong guy. Oh, we see Donald Trump there uh, at a rally in Pennsylvania. You can see his face. Um, there's blood coming from his ear. We heard at first what I thought might have been fireworks. The amount of negligence, the amount of mistakes that was made here. Take a look at what happened. Okay, if you haven't been living under a rock, last Saturday was the attempted assassination attempt on Donald J. Trump. And I was watching it when it happened, and I'm telling you what, it is really scary. But I wanted to get into some details, and in this video, I'm gonna react to some of the videos that are out there right now, and I'd love your reaction. So first of all, I wanna take a minute to react to this video. All right, so this was an interview on CNN. Different videos where uh, an assailant will pull a firearm on a law enforcement officer, and the first thing that they do is they immediately pull and draw and mitigate the threat and the risk. You know, I ask why the local law enforcement officer did not do so. Um, the other thing is, is that when you set up an advanced team, I keep hearing this about the perimeter elements. Yeah. You know, the perimeter is actually established by your threats that are in the area. So if I don't have any threats outside of 100 yards, okay, fine, I can cordon off a certain area. By the way, on this video, watch her body language change, okay? But if I have a building 160 yards perfectly adjacent to the stage, that's an obvious threat, especially with an elevated position that has overwatch. Mm -hmm. That's a sniper's paradise. And you know, we talk about Eagle's Nest. You also have, which no one talks about, but the water tower. So the what I'm hearing from wells. you is it's not it, it, a failure on the ground for sure, but 100%. also a failure in advance? Uh, I think it's a failure in advance. I think it's a failure to have this, the counter snipers to be able to establish their range. First of all, before he gets any deeper, do you believe this was a failure of Secret Service, like a, just an oversight, or is there more to the story. We also learned that local snipers were stationed inside that building. I, I haven't heard that piece of it yet, but that doesn't necessarily make sense unless they were actually in a window which was backed off, because a lot of times you will get yourself in there. Sometimes you expose your rifle in a way to try and do a force protection or a show of force uh -huh. that actually stops things. Others are actually more tactical where they'll sit back a little bit, but a sniper for the law enforcement is only trained to shoot about 75 yards, unlike your kind of sniper teams that are on, on so, but, but here's my problem. In, in, in having done this for so long, they always say the adage of ignorance is bliss, and I think that's true. I've done thousands of advances. I've done thousands of, of counter sniper operations with our teams in or, you know, Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan, etc. The amount of negligence, the amount of mistakes that was made here, I have a very difficult time not leaning myself towards this was intentional as opposed to fecklessness. But wait, talk to me about that. I actually heard you say this right um, the day after, which I wanted to ask you about what do you mean intentional? You know, you I mean I, an intentional failure on the part of. No, I wouldn't say an intentional failure on the part of, but I gotta just, uh, you know, I sit here and I scratch my head. You don't want to be the conspiracist. You don't want to be the. I, person. I'm telling you because that's what it, that's what it, it's leaning to. No, I, I, I know, and 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 that's the issue is that you walk this fine balance of, you're not trying to be a conspiracist, but you look at it and you go, how could this have gone so right? So. The whole word conspiracy theorist is like, I don't even know if that's appropriate here. This is called logical deductive reasoning, right? Conspiracy is assuming there's some sort of a conspiracy out there and it's a theory. But I think this is deductive reasoning what this guy's talking about. But it's one thing Corn. if someone on the street says it. It's not that, I mean, you, Corn Mills, member of Congress, former sniper, you saying it, I mean, it makes my eyebrows go up. What, when you say you're walking the line on this, intentional what? You know, it almost seems to me, and I think that an investigation is necessary at this point within Congress, not just the FBI, not just others. You know, I look back at it and I'm thinking, all right, f you know, uh, for an individual, if you looked at the escalations and how they are trying to approach him, let's just say that it was like, okay, first we want to censor and silence you, then we want to indict and imprison you. Now we're attempting to kill you and take whoa, you whoa, off whoa, the stage. Whoa, 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 You, uh, <laughs> let's, let's slow down. Please. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing two things from you. I don't want to jump ahead of things, but I'm also hearing you jumping ahead of things. Well, actually, I'm just looking at all the different possible capabilities. You know, one of the things as a military member, one of the things, well, wait, but one of the things as a person who's running the special operations communities before. This lady is losing her mind right now. She's like, I did not know you were going to come on my show and actually talk about something that possibly could happen. You look at all potential analysis, right? That, Donald that's how Trump you and his team have said, do not, that we, like, no, I agree. Dial it back. But, do but, not blame. 
blame this on Joe Biden. Oh, well, actually, I didn't say Joe Biden, uh, to be completely Who's the clear. they, then? Let's be very specific. Well, that's what the investigation is, too. Was it local law enforcement that had made the mistakes, or was there something to it? Was there uh, other types of things that we need to be analyzing uh, or looking at and, and providing analysis? My, my point is, is that when something so significant, you're talking about something that hasn't happened in decades, right? I totally— But, but, I, I, but I, my I, point is, is this. From a perspective of someone who's actually conducted these, these are not difficult advances. This is not like I'm putting together a stage placement in a tight shot. This is about looking at your surroundings. What is my green, yellow, and red route, which is your routes out in case? What is my actual elements of, that I need to be looking at as far as mitigating threats or risks or increased levels? Where's my range fan for the sniper that says, okay, here's my 100, my 200, my sketch. Here's an area where someone could shoot. Here's some, because here's my thing. So you're Let's saying, just say it's wait, a voice wait. element. You are saying this is so basic that how big the screw up was that's what's leading your brain that, down that, this that's road. exactly right in, in but a way look, but but because here's the other thing let's tom just say emmer it's was a just on. tom emmer was just on with me and he said very specifically to me i wrote it down mm -hmm. he said very clearly it is too early to be talking about is. who is at fault and who is responsible is. that's why an investigation is necessary but, uh, is it is it not dangerous is it not reckless to use, to even be throwing around the word intentionally. So my question to you is, is it dangerous to be saying that this act could be intentional? Is that a bad word? Should we just take whatever they're telling us, whatever the, I mean, if you watch the news media, the mainstream news media the same day, they wouldn't even call it an assassination for the first day. Like, I don't think that they are very happy about this guy telling his knowledgeable insight on CNN. To question things as we do an investigation is recklessness, because at that point, then should we never question anything? My point is this. I, I, so I'm not trying to be... I'm not trying to be... I'm not trying to be PC. My point but, but is, in the my, political environment that we are in... What would it have taken, right? Let's just say that resources was limited. Let's go with that mm -hmm. as, as a reasoning. So how many times have you seen where they just put a, a police car inside of a parking lot with not an officer in it and just leave the lights on as a deterrent? Why couldn't that have been a simple thing that was placed in? Why couldn't we have said to the owner of the actual AGR our company, hey, look, we don't want to disrupt your business, but we also want to make sure your parking lot is clear of people trying to park in there for the rally. Why don't we place an officer there? My point is that this was too easy of a solution. And when I think about 160 I'm just so uncomfortable shot, with even having I'm to... uncomfortable with having to say it. Trust me, my whole point is, is that I would like to look at this and say, where was the mistake made? How can we correct it in the future? Why was this actually done? But I think that this does warrant a J-13 type commission where we can actually look at it and say, let's investigate and find out why this happened so it doesn't happen to anyone. This is not about a political thing. Thing. This is about we had an attempt to assassinate a president. Mm -hmm. We really need to understand what a serious matter this is. And this was a milliseconds or millimeter difference between yeah. this being an attempt and this being an assassination. And I can tell you at 160 yards, okay, just to give you an idea, your off the shelf rifle shoots what they call one minute of angle mm -hmm. at every 100 yard line. So at 100, it's one inch. 202 inches, etc. So now you're talking about 1.6 inch grouping capability of a rifle off a manufacturing line. Your average human being, because we used to do this in understanding sniper training, you're 20 inches shoulder to shoulder, 40 inches head to waist, and you're at six by eight in your average head size. These are kind of the di dimensions that you look at as an average. You're talking about a 1.6 inch grouping for multiple shots on a basic rifle. We're blessed. And I do believe in divine intervention, so I am a person of faith. The whole thing, I think, just needs to have a better explanation so that the American people and everyone can feel comfortable. And I think that's why people are saying pump the brakes, because we have seen conspiracy theories, honestly, on the right and the left. I just said Donio Sullivan on that it's already going like wildfire. This is a kind of political environment that they're saying it's too hot and people yeah. are jumping to too many conclusions. Well, as a that's, I mean, that's why I am so As a military member, one of the things that we do is we what if scenario everything in the world, right? That's I how know, but it's, but it, I don't know. I'm and just so saying if it's look at the what if, the what the ifs, what if that you, you talk about maybe in an investigation and the what if that, that you, you are present presenting on live television i don't know it's just well so listen I'm, I'm a public official yes anything that i do anything that i say i say in the public i don't try and hide it in private i think that the american people need transparency accountability and accessibility to the elected officials not to try and hide behind mm -hmm. what we want to look at and i also think that <clears throat> if we if, if the american people know that we're questioning these things as well it puts them at rest to at least know why aren't they at least looking into this why we should look at Every single situation which is of this significance, we should look at it from multiple angles to ensure that nothing is left out, nothing could be potentially claimed as being covered up. Yeah. We need to have more transparency to the American people, and I think that's what everyone deserves. But a full investigation. Full investigation. Before anyone that's right. points at fault. That's exactly right. And that's why I say I lean 
I have not made an accusation of something. I just want to make sure we're covering our bases to ensure okay. that we get a proper investigation at all levels to ensure this doesn't happen again and that our president can be safe. Congressman, thank you for coming in. Thank, thank you. you very much. There is no question after watching this video that there is more to this story, right? We don't know the story, but here's what we do know. Number one, anybody that is saying it was an inch or two inches away is dead wrong because it hits someone's ear. That's not an inch away, that's on someone's head. Your ears attached to your head, it hits someone's ear. So it was way closer, it's millimeters away. So people getting all upset about like, hey, that there's a monument of failure, or hey, that the local police saw this guy 30 minutes before, or that people were pointing him out, or that there was a stand down. There's all these theories that are going on right now. Well, listen, I'm gonna get into one more. So one of the things that I heard after this, and this is all politics, right? Nancy Pelosi says, I hope that President Trump it gets better because I've been a victim of violence too. As one whose family has been the victim of political violence, I know firsthand that political violence of any kind has no place in our society. Well, there's never been an assassination attempt, but I wanted to get your response from this video as well. So this, if you guys are not aware of this, this is, Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, who's been arrested for DUI. They happen to have a reputation of uh, liking to knock him back, okay? This is the police arriving at the scene at their house. So I wanted to bring this up so that you could compare what is going on here. All right, you, you guys open right. up. What's going on, man? Everything's good. Hi. Hi. Drop the hammer. Um, nope. Hey, 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 hey. What is Pardon going on right now? I'm not getting an answer on call. Bro. All right, oh, all right, all right. So check this out. So check this out. Drop the hammer. Paul Pelosi has a drink in his hands. If you are a victim of violence, somebody breaking into your house, Allegedly, why do you got a drink in your hands and you're hanging out? You're gonna put the drink down, right? Would you agree that somebody's not gonna have a drink in their hands? You're probably not gonna be in your boxer briefs with that person as well. Let me know if I'm off base here. All right, so he's got a hammer. He hits him with a hammer. They go to the ground. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. So there's definitely some violence at that household, right? My question is, which one looks like political violence? Does the first one look like political violence where somebody's up on a roof shooting at somebody else trying to assassinate them? Or does the other one look like suspect as well that maybe we don't know the whole story about Mr. Paul Pelosi? Do you believe in divine intervention, right? Like, do you believe Donald Trump's life was spared because God got in the way. Like, to me, it's pretty clear. And then on top of that, if you're looking at a lot of these videos that are circling online about like Secret Service agents ducking ahead of time and moving people out of the way, that looks highly suspicious. On top of that, again, you have the most basic thing. Everybody knows, anybody who's not even trained in military knows that most shootings, you have a shooter on the roof, on the Mandalay Bay. You go back to Houston, Texas, one of the biggest shootings way back in the 1970s at a college campus. Shooting up high, elevated. You wanna even go to Lee Harvey Oswald, the suspected killer of JFK, which we still don't have those documents out. Why would they be hiding that? So my question to you is, who was the assassin? Was it? This Thomas Brooks guy, a 20 year old Republican, do you believe that he had no social media? Do you believe that he acted alone? And do you believe that somebody more orchestrated, someone or a group of people with more power? My opinion is this needs an investigation, a very, very deep investigation. And we, as the American people, should know exactly what's going on. If we don't know what's going on, then guess what? We really know what's going on. If you didn't know, now you know. Like, the system's fixed, right? Like, there are so many things where you just don't have control over it. So, my final thing is, let's react to the actual moment where he says, fight, fight, fight. Did that give you chills? Did that make you feel some way, some sort of way? Whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, to me, the most patriotic that I have ever felt was that moment right there and then 9-11. We've been in a 
area of division with our country. Nobody wants to see anybody get killed. And nobody wants to see someone taken out that you could vote for. You wanna cast your vote for Joe Biden? You don't wanna see this guy getting taken out. You may not like Donald Trump. You may despise Donald Trump. But the fact of the matter is, if people are starting to assassinate our political leaders, our leaders, if they're starting to jail our leaders, if they're starting to jail people, we don't have a country anymore. We don't have a system anymore. We have total chaos and the United States is no longer the best place in the world to live. Having traveled all over the country, all over the world, I can tell you right now, it's still one of the best countries to live, but that is changing every day. Day. So I hope they come with an investigation and I would love to hear your opinion on what happened in this video. Talk to you in the next one. Peace. My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. And guess what? You got the wrong guy.